my biggest advice to anybody that wants to be a speaker is to understand anybody can relay information. But what inspires people is relatability. I chase the fear because that's where the opportunity is. Because if, if you're not afraid of it, one, it's not challenging, and one, you don't, and two, you don't care about it. So maybe it's challenging, but you just don't care. So you don't fear it because you never even go over there. But if you care about something and it's challenging, that's exactly the, the potion of the opportunity to grow. People will tell you no over and over again, even when you know in your intuition this is what you're meant to do. But you have to remember that this is preparing you for all the things you have in your future. Right. You need the no's to know how much you really love it. If you got the yes immediately, you wouldn't know how bad you really love this. Welcome to the Saint Pod. Yeah, welcome back to the Saint Pod. Far from Saints, mm -hmm. far from sinners. Today we got Jamar. He's all the way from Dallas. He's um, a public speaker. Yep. He's but he's multifaceted. Though. Don't don't get don't get a shot. Sure. You know, uh, he's actually came to Philly for um, one of his jobs, little gigs. What would you call him? Yeah, speaking gig, you know, I was at a high school type joint, so it was a fun time, bro. Good job. Bro, yeah. for everybody that don't know you, though, yeah. I feel like you articulate way better than me. Yeah. Then uh, let them know. Let them know what you do. Run it yeah, down. so I like to say I'm an inspirational speaker, not a motivational speaker, um, but I am a motivational speaker, but if you had to, if I had to pick one title, it'd be an inspirational speaker and I'm a philosopher. And so mm. um, everything I speak about is, is philosophy I developed from my own life. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm no like reiteration of a book. I'm experiences and, and then what I've learned from that. And so I'm just using that to inspire um, people, whether that's the next generation, whether that's people older than me, whatever it may be, to find their passion, figure out what they want to do with their life. Um, that's all I'm about. Not all I'm about, but that's my main topic. And, you know, just helping people find the best versions of themselves and how to continuously go through that journey. I that, so, yeah, I'm, I, I speak at that, schools bro. all across the country, have my own podcast, have my own YouTube channel. Right. So I'm just achieving that in a multitude of different ways. Um, next year, I'll probably have a different way I'm doing that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's right. why I like to say, yeah, inspirational speaker, but I like to say I'm a philosopher. Right. Right. Because right. I'm just, you know. Because, first of all, your job is not who you are or what you do. 100%. You feel me? It's, it's really what's behind that. And for, first of all, let's break it all the way down. You feel yeah. me? Uh, let, let's speak about philosophy. What's the philosophy to you? Because to me, you know, it's the way of living, right? Yeah. But we'll speak on that a little bit. Yeah, way of living or how you see the world. You know what right. I'm saying? How you see things to be. Um, not every philosophy is for every person. Right. I'm not aiming to say this is exactly how every person should live. This is just my best way of from my perspective. Right. And I think it's valuable to see the perspective from people because we all have these different ways of life. And I've had these super unique experiences and so I think it's valuable for people to hear. And I think anybody can be a philosopher. Ain't no, like, you this wise right, guy. Right, right, right. No, everybody is a philosopher if you look at the world and have your own yeah, take. Yeah, opinions. You know what I'm have saying? Opinions. And I have my own take. I know what's worked for me. And it's like, look, this was worked for me and this was didn't. Do with that what you will type right, of thing. Right, right. So basically you're saying, this is my experience. Take it or leave it kind of thing. Yeah, my experience and what I... Like... Everybody has experiences, but not everybody thinks about their experiences. Reflection. That's the difference. Reflection. A lot of people are just doing, and they have no idea what uh -huh. they're, they're even taking from it. And uh, that comes from being uh, doing introspection, right? Yeah. And my question is, though, why do you think people don't do that? Why do you, like, why, I can never live a life where I'm doing something, I'm never reflecting. I think, it's, honestly, I'm on autopilot, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, like, my, how I naturally am. Yeah. I, I can't not do it, I guess I can yeah. say it like that. Like, so why do you think people do that? Don't I don't do that. I think people don't reflect because they're afraid of what they may find out. Mm. And so you look at our culture, we have every reason and every opportunity to distract ourselves. Right. We have the most distractions of any generation. We right. have our phones. We have not only our phones, but the social media that only gives us short intention span. Right. We have TV. We have all these ways of we have alcohol. We whatever it is like we have all these different ways to escape from our reality right. because we're afraid of what we may find out because the thing is all the things in our experiences are opportunities to grow but the mm. opportunities to grow are hidden as things that we're afraid of or we're scared to do mm. and so we, we're ducking what we're afraid of but that's actually where the growth is and then we stay in the same spot distracted all the time right. so I think people are afraid of growth because they know growth comes from dealing with the stuff they don't want to hear about right but when you get comfortable with knowing the bad stuff is almost like the opportunity, the good stuff, then you almost want to find the, the, the bad. You want to find the mess ups because now right. it's like, I got something to do. 
Um, I think people are afraid of actually knowing they have a purpose in this world. They're afraid of knowing, mm. dang, I actually have a responsibility. Mm. It's more than just right. taking care of myself and surviving. Right. And the thing about it is everything's perspective. Yes, everything. Everything is perspective. So you know how you were just saying, oh, the best things of life. Basically, you're saying the best things of life are is the a, worst. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I don't know. Listen, I don't know. I don't know if you're religious. I don't know why life is like this, yeah. but it's just being shown again and again 100%. and again from all of the time we have seen it. And, you know, so that's why I think people like us or even anybody in your profession, whenever you really go through the bad things, good will always come because without the bad, there is no such thing as there's good. no good. It, it's a balance in life. You will never like you. If there was all good, we could have nothing to compare it to. You, you speak understand my that? language, dog. You, you understand that? Language. So once you understand that, it's like, why would I be afraid of anything? That's where the fear leaves is when you understand that in order to get what you want, you have to go through the bad shit. Exactly. You can curse on this. No, nah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you, I'm tell you, you know, you got to appreciate it. But yeah, bro, everything that I used to say, why is this happened to me was always now in my looking back is now it's for me. Right. Like everything I was like, why does this have right. to be my life right. is now in now what I'm thinking. This is really my life is because I dealt with all the things mm -hmm. I was saying. Why is this me? That's what made you. Because I looked at the opportunity in it instead of saying, man, I have to deal with this. I'm unlucky. Right. You know, you can be the luckiest person on earth and deem yourself the most unluckiest person. So therefore, you are the unluckiest because you have an unlucky mindset. Right. You ain't see the value in it. Right. And so anything in this world can be seen. Now, there's certain exceptions. I don't like to blanket that. There's certain right. things that are straight bad. Not facts. But at the end of the day, you can have a perspective at the very least to anything. Mm. If you're breathing, watching this video, you have a perspective of positivity because you woke up today. Right. And so no matter what you're going through, if you're alive, you, I promise you, you're luckier than millions of people that never birthed. You know what I'm saying? Like at the very least, you have that of perspective. And so it's all about finding the perspective and asking yourself, what if there's a reason I'm not going to know about yet that I'll find out in the future, but it's only possible that I find out this reason if I go through the pain now. Mm. And I've found my reasons years later, and now I know whatever I go through, I'm just trust that the reason will will come. But I think the next step in growth is when you're able to release yourself of needing to know the reason. Right. So what if you go through pain, you go through something that sucks, and the reasons for something you will never find out about, but it was needed for civilization. See what I'm saying? There's people that have lost their lives. There's people who have sacrificed for things they would never see. There's people who dealt with racism and did things and sacrificed themselves for the moment we have right now, but they never got to know if it was ever actually possible. Right. So like everything we, we, we deal with is perspective, but the next step in evolution as a person is when you're able to release the need of right. the reason. Yo, it's like I'm talking to myself right yeah. now. Release the expectation. Yep. Release the belief for your expectations. I have this thing. I, I, I said this thing. I'm not saying I created it, but this is what I said. What's up? Pray for the best. Expect nothing. Mm, I like it. Now, I'm, we're not sitting here and trying to tell you, oh, don't wish good things for yourself. Yeah. We're not trying to say that. But we are trying to say is, believe everything is going to be great. Believe everything's going to be the best that's going to happen. Do not expect it, because that's when you ruin things. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, if I'm a good person, right? Let's just say good yeah. person. Yeah. And I see an old lady uh, trying to carry a jug of waters. I, I want to go help that lady. Yeah. If I expect something from it, right? When I go to help her and if she don't give me nothing, it's like, oh my, oh, you're expecting. What I, what I do that for? Yeah. You know, what I do that for? That's how you know you're, you're being driven by the wrong things. It should just be like, I'm going to do this good thing because of me. Yeah. And then whatever flourishes, flourishes. And I know by evidence based, things are going to come my way. 100%. I'm going, that's going to come back. It, Same thing if you do something bad. Yeah. You do something bad, it's going to come back to you. 100%. And what's crazy is the moment you release the need for it to come back is when it comes back the most. Mm, what right. I've realized is True. the moment you stop caring about the results is when you get the best results. Right. The moment you're caring about things, oh my bad, you, you know, I'm, I'm all, you see, I'm hyped up now. <laughs> but the moment you care about the results so much is when the results are the worst because you're not dealing in something that's organic, that's real. Mm. The moment you stop caring is when people can feel that you're not caring, therefore they rock with you more. Right. And so I think, you know, we have to release ourselves of knowing what our purpose is or knowing how many views we'll get or knowing right. if this person I like us because guess what? If 
it doesn't come, there's also a reason for it not coming yet. Right. Like I'm so thankful mm. the things that I was wanting and praying for didn't happen because there's so many more lessons that have been clear that I needed to learn. That's what I'm and saying. then guess what? When you get yeah. there, are you going to be able to sustain it? Right. That's what people don't think about. A lot of people want success, but do you want to keep success? You might not. You a lot of people ready. can reach success. That's that's simple. Right. But can you stay there? Mm-hmm. And you know how you stay there is by of going through the process right. where now you're disciplined to be able to hold that on. Right. So I don't want, like, I, I don't even be praying for what I want yet. I be praying for what I need and only God know what I need, in right. my opinion. And so what I be asking for is the next challenge that prepares me for whatever I'm meant for. Right. And so even when I have dreams, I'm like, I'm praying for those dreams. But it's like, if there's a better one, let me have that one. Right. Like, I. I right. There's stuff better than your dreams that are, are possible reality for your life if you just start trusting the process right. and not wishing for it and begging for it. And, and that's the thing I really go for it. <laughs> Shit, even on the smallest level, bro. Yeah. If I'm late for work, bro, I'd just be like, hey, maybe just, something bad was going to happen on my way to work. Yeah. I had to be late. Or you so, could mess around, meet somebody. And, bro, right. you don't and know. that's what I'm saying because, bro, this life is so unpredictable. Mm-hmm. We, we as human beings have no idea the yes. possibilities that, that things can hold. Release yourself from these kind of things because, bro, like your attachment to the views, your attachment to like a good outcomes, your attachment to the money is going to be your downfall. Yep. It's going to be your downfall, bro. And once you start learning to be authentic and genuine and just doing it just because you want to, just because you feel like, no, it's a good thing to do, just because you're just following your heart, that's when everything opens the door. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Everything's open, bro. Ain't lying, bro. Everything just flows, bro. Real shit, real yeah. shit. Even us meeting, bro, I feel like it was divine invention. You feel 100%. me? Like, and um, I knew it was going to be a good joint, too. I, I knew yeah. it was going to be on the same frequency, yeah. bro, because I just know when I'm doing something and I'm on the same frequency as a lot of things, money, people, or it could be anything. Mm-hmm. That's when I know I'm doing something right. Something, something's opening up. You feel me? Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm evidence of this shit. I'm not just. We're not just saying this. You feel yeah. me? Like, I want you to speak on some of your experiences. Like, what? Like, how did you know this was the path for you? How did you know? Like, like what was signs? Like, oh, doors is open. I'm like, I keep going, keep going. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Speak on that a little bit. Yeah, bro. I've had countless of those moments where it's like this don't make sense. Right. Like it, it don't. Like freshman year of college. I um went to this conference as a volunteer and I barely even ended up going. Like I ended up seeing like a poster of it in my dorm room and somebody just told me to send an email out to ask to volunteer after the deadline passed. Right. I go to this conference and end up going there and I and I worked the entire conference. They said we only get a couple of sessions like um to work and I asked and I just worked the whole joint. Mm-hmm. And she was like, Yeah, you can work the whole joint and end up working the whole conference and they let me sit in on one panel to watch it. Right. And um like I swear like Life was just like, yo, you about to tell a speech. Like, you about to do. Like, I ain't never really told a speech. I'm at a conference. I have the, the volunteer outfit on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else in suits. And they're, right. like, way older than me. I'm, like, 18 at this time, 19. Mm. And some tells me to just start outlining a speech off of the topic of the panel. And I don't know why, but I'm like, okay. And I just start. I don't even. Bro, it doesn't even make sense. But I was like, all right. I start writing it down. Start doing something. And then they were like, okay, Q&A. And then I was like, I'm going to raise my hand. And he's going to pick me. And. I'm going to say my speech. Mm. Still, it doesn't make sense, something, but I'm like, I'm going to yeah. do it. And I raise my hand. I just know he's going to pick me. I just know. And he looks me, and he's like, he, and then he was like, boom, first question. And I'm like, can I, can I ask my question at the front? He's mm-hmm. like, sure. I go up to the front, and I just start saying my speech. I take like eight minutes. They probably only had the panel for like five <laughs> more minutes on a lot of time. Yeah. But I just go off, bro. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know what the reaction is, but I just mm-hmm. go off. And, bro, I get a standing ovation, everything crazy. I get, like, a stack of business cards. And in that moment, I didn't even think maybe I could be a speaker. I was just like, dang. That's cool. It was cool. Like, <laughs> like I probably there. just got my job yeah. off this joint. Yeah. And um, that was a sign. I've had countless other signs that have happened. But that's one that I look yeah. back on like, bro, yeah. that is insane. Yeah. And then from that, I ended up getting the opportunity to go to the Olympic facility. I met all these crazy people. Met this lady that was telling me I was meant for so much more than what I was trying for. Like, all these things were divine, like, signs, like, Right. You, you meant for more, dude. Right. And so, um, man, it was just, I got pushed into that. And I started my podcast in COVID. If it was for COVID, I probably wouldn't be here with you. Mm-hmm. I started my podcast. And then from the podcast, I, I had, that's all I knew to do was I didn't have nothing else to do. So I started the podcast. Then I yeah. learned like, yo, I have an impact on my voice. Right. So all these things. So like the podcast kind of was like, all right, I think I'm on the song. Bro, right. not even when I was making it. When I was making it, I would set up a camera just like this and I have on my mic and I couldn't do it. Mm. Like I would do it There was this one particular day Where I remember I was trying to do it And I was like 
I had to go cry in my room because I was so Shit, bad. Yeah. Like, it, it was yeah. that bad. I was like, bro, yeah. I don't even, I can't. Like, I was literally, I was like, bro, yeah. that waste money. My parents waste money buying me a yeah. camera. Like, bro, it was mm. one of the hardest films of my life. Mm. But I went through that, and now I'm, I spoke to hundreds of kids today. You know right. what I'm saying? And right. I speak to, like, a thousand kids on Monday in Washington, the state. That's like beautiful. On the other side, like, all that stuff happened. You can't tell me something was in control. You know what I'm saying? You know, I had to do my part, but. It was insane, bro. And that's the thing about it. It's just like we have no idea. Like again, we have no idea where it's gonna go. Yeah. And that, that's the thing. You just have to start believing in yourself. You 100%. know what I mean? Believing in yourself and believing in the divine. You feel me? And like once those in your lock, bro. You, oh, you it's good. game over. You good? You good for the yeah. rest? The rest of the time, it's really like a clicking thing. It's like like click, click, click. You got it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So um. Yeah, that's a tough story though. Like what you were saying, yeah. I had a question about that though. And it's even more like it's so much to that yeah. story, bro. Like, yeah. there's moments like if I don't, like, oh, it's just so much, bro. Like it's like so many things. If I would have just yeah. said, oh, I'm gonna do that, like so right. many things don't ripple into a right. Well, right, let's get into you a little bit. Yeah. So, all right, where were you born? Dallas, Texas. All right, so you you, yeah. you grew up there. You yeah, grew, grew up, up Dallas, Texas. Part. Everything. Yeah. So like, what like did you have any signs as when you're younger? So something I think about. I had, I had some signs when I was younger that I would be doing stuff like with people. I knew people were my thing mm. based off some stuff I did when I was younger. Was there anything when you were younger where you were like, this might like, like, I, oh, it makes sense now. That's why I was like that. You feel me? Like, like you have anything like that? Bro, I just remember like, one, always feeling like, yo, I know I'm special. I just don't know how to explain it. Mm. Like, I just remember that feeling. And I was like, dang, I wonder if I'm going to live my whole life never finding out why I felt like that. Mm. Um, and I also remember just like, thinking about stuff like i remember like being in math class i was i wasn't just trying to figure out the equation i'd be like what if there's a new way to solve the equation right. that hasn't been done before right. i would just think like that right right and, and right. obviously i didn't get the next like einstein equation or nothing <laughs> but like no it's just true. the fact that i was thinking mm -hmm. like that you know what i'm saying and yeah. so i definitely had those moments where i was just like i don't know and i think i always had like instinct like even when i played sports like, i had this weird like natural flow instinct to like do stuff mm. and i didn't know if it was parallel to other and it is like I, this is a sport speaking as a sport right. and i just have this weird like my mind right. is weird bro um and when i tap in with it, it it's it's a it's a monster mm. but it can work in a monster the other way too but um yeah i had definitely signs bro um definitely like would just be like in class and be able to elaborate certain things sometimes or I just be able to like think creatively sometimes, but I was also right. really shy. Right. So that's you know. how it usually is, though. Yeah. Like, like even when we look at you know people, people, even people behind me, they they were shy. They were shy kids. Yeah. They were introverted. Very. You know what I'm saying, and I, and I was the same way. Even, like it's crazy how like we, we end up doing stuff that's opposite. so opposite. Yeah. You feel me? And um, I want you to speak on. So um, you said you said um, it, it's a monster. Matter of fact, I want to speak on this. You said something about communication. You said, "What did you say about communication?" Like I can kind of elaborate. Okay, it's you sports. said it's a sport. Yeah. Explain that. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, communication is a sport. Well, or speaking is a sport. That's what you said. Oh yeah, yeah. So speaking mm. is a sport. So for example, here's a story you can get out of me. Uh, I don't think a pod gotten this story out of me. Um. So hey. yeah, yeah. So one of the things that's like, oh my goodness, we talk about reasons. We don't know the reason why something's happening. Oh, this one is like. Whoa, you were working your thing with this one, okay? So my sophomore year of high school, I was a varsity baseball player. I played varsity my freshman year, didn't really play. Mm. Sophomore year, I was a starting second baseman. This is down in Dallas? Yeah, this is back in high school. And I'm the starting second baseman. I've been playing baseball my whole life. It's no thing, bro. Right. Like, I've been playing baseball my whole life. Bro, my, my type of mind is a monster, bro. I couldn't throw the ball to the first base no more. I couldn't throw the ball at all. Because not physically, but like my anxiety was just so afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't throw the ball. It was just all mind. And so I was constantly just afraid of failure. Like, I had a horrible season, bro. Like, my coaches was laughing at me. Like, it was yeah. that bad. You know how depressing that is? Like, no, it's like right. the one thing you're good at at that time, that's all I knew myself right. was, was as a baseball player. One thing I'm good at, I, I'm horrible at it. And I was a baseball player that couldn't throw a baseball. You feel me? And going through that was one of the hardest things of my entire life. And I was able to find, like, I ended up moving to the outfield and got my swag back. But it was still like a thing. And what I realized was when I'm speaking, it's so similar to when I was throwing the baseball around. It was like, I'll have mental blocks speaking wise. Like sometimes where I'm like, I can't articulate. Right. I don't really get that no more though. Like I, I can enter flow state, like right. dropping a dime now. 
But when I was first, I decided to become a public speaker. Or no, when I was doing this, when I remember I told you I was crying, yeah. Yeah. it felt exactly the same from baseball. Mm -hmm. Like, ex bro, exactly. It was mm -hmm. like literally just mental lack of belief, like was stopping me. And what I've realized in both sectors, the moment I figured it out was the moment I didn't care. The moment I didn't care in baseball, zip. It wasn't so, like I, I did something mechanically. Zip, it, like, or let's say we were throwing a ball around and it had no repercussions or a fence was behind me. Mm -hmm. Zip. You know what I'm saying? And then I moved to the outfield so you can throw the ball as hard as you want because you're not right. segment. Yeah. Zip. It was like water. And then the moment I did my podcast, I said, you know what, bro? I don't care. The moment I got on stage, I'm like, you know what? Because sometimes every now and then I'll get it. And I'm like, all right, remember, just don't give a fuck. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And boom, flow yeah. state. And so what I when I go through that now, if it pops up to me, I'm like, bro, you, you done already been through the worst mm -hmm. of this. It ain't, ain't even ever going to be as close to that. Right. So now I know the reason why because life was like, look, I got to put you through this and you're going to be embarrassed and some other people are going to have some success right now. But I'm gearing you up to do something beyond what they can even imagine, dog. Right. And so I need you to look stupid so when it's time you on that big stage, I can make sure you know how to overcome that feeling. And I, I got to have my reason. I can always go back and say, look, that thing in high school that embarrassed me, that, that was aching, like it was hard. Now it fuels what I do. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's, I'm very thankful for it. Yeah, man, that's, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, like, bro. And one thing I wanted to get from that was um, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Uh, I argue that with you. All right, we, we could do that, but I'm going to say this real quick. Yeah. Um, I really feel like a lot of times that we, we we do something, we do one thing right in life. And this can be, for example, us being a student, right? Yeah. I'll take that. Oh, I'm horrible at school. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm horrible at school. Like, we will never use this again in life. So why, why, yeah. why even care about school? I'm so bad at it. And then you go to your job. You go to your job. It doesn't matter what kind of job it is. You're late, just like you're in school. You, you have to remember certain things. You have to study. It doesn't matter what you do. You have to study certain stuff, yeah. whenever, whenever, whatever you're doing. And everything translates. You feel me? Yeah. Even being a man, I would say, you know what I'm saying? Being a man, like, if, if you're not good at honesty, you won't be good at accountability. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everything kind of connects to, to it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So what I wanted to say was, so stop running away from one thing. So yeah. if you're saying, oh, I, I can't do this. Don't run away from it. Go towards it. Like yeah. get better at it because guess what? It's gonna be something else. Yeah, you are gonna have challenges. I agree with that. Like I tell people, like them stupid math problems we didn't care about. Yeah, bro, you had to deal with problem solving skills to figure out how to get that math right. problem. While I'm never gonna be able to solve for a Pythagorean theorem or whatever, right, right. but like me figuring out Pythagorean theorem now as an entrepreneur, when I'm like, bro, I don't know how this little thing worked, but I'm I guess I gotta figure it out, mm -hmm. even though it feels stupid. But now I got to have it, you know? Right. But I will argue that how you right. do everything isn't how you do everything. Like, there's just certain things, like, plain and simple. If I like doing something, I'm going to give it more energy than something I hate. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And so I always, like, balance that while everything has an opportunity of, you know, if you're going through it and getting better and translating. Right. There's also an element I believe in, like, yo, I don't like doing something, especially when you've found a career in something you love to do, like, I don't like doing something, then I'm not going to do it. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, for Because sure, sure. I'm just, I know you're not going to get the best out of me. For you sure. tell me you want me to, like, like, there's just certain things that are just like, bro, I, I hate doing that. No, no, you definitely. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm going a, I'm to a want to, if I don't read the books I like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say yeah. I'm not going to want to read yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah, I get that. I guess, um, I guess I'm really talking about con conceptual. I know what you mean. Conceptual. Yeah. I'm speaking about that. But yeah, um, damn. I would say I, I would say I want a good debate. Let's go. But uh, no, I, I kind of agree with you. I, I think with you. I think I knew that was yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. But I was just, let me <laughs> let me get it. Yeah. yeah. But um, bro. So listen. So how long have you been doing this for? Inspirational speaking, like yes. professionally. Yes. About two years. About two years in. Yeah. So for example, let's say it's a high schooler kid out here, right? Yeah. Uh, he feels like he has a passion for it. Um, he has a passion for speaking, mm -hmm. but he feels like he wants to um, get better at it. Yeah. What do you think, what would you recommend him doing? Um, literally get so comfortable at speaking, like do it so much that you wouldn't mind speaking to the wall. Mm. Like I can speak to a wall and still have fun right. and not need that reinforcement. So you, you're not going to be able to always get this crazy like, 
right. everybody like right here yeah. with you. But what's crazy is the kid like this is listening. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just don't know, but you have to keep going because if you start acting like, dang, he's affecting me, then right. you're not getting this kid because he, right. he got you. Right. And so um, I would say just speak every day. Don't think about no marketing. Don't think about mm-hmm. no like um, getting on the stages and, you know, try it, all this stuff. But work on the craft, right. bro. I tell people I worked on that craft. Mm-hmm. Constantly with no results, but it really was results. It was just my personal growth right. that was leading to right. me to when I was prepared for the opportunity. Right. You know what I'm saying? Preparation before you get the opportunity. Yeah. So when you get the opportunity, can you take advantage of it? A lot of people want to learn how to get the opportunities, but they don't want to prepare for when you get the opportunity. Right. So you have an opportunity, mm-hmm. but no way of taking advantage of it. Right. So I would say literally get your phone out and do this once a day at least and just, and just go just off. Talk. And just go off. Pick a topic and go off. And go as long as you can. If it's one, if it's 30 seconds today, that's fine. If it's 30 seconds tomorrow, that's fine. Just do it every day. And eventually, what happened is right. you you can hand me a word. Any word. And I'm like, all right, bet. Let's just, I'll just talk. Just go. Yeah. Mm. Because you got to be able to just flow. And, and it's a hard thing. Don't get me wrong, bro. It's a hard thing. Right. But once you get it, it's like you're... You know, it's like you're a freestyle yeah. artist. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just you don't got to deal with no beat. Right, know? right. So I would say just speak constantly. Yeah, and I was going to say about like what you were saying, like once you get it, you kind of get it. It's, it's just funny because like I understand that. I feel like a lot of people might understand that too because when you get good at something, you won't have to prepare for it kind of thing. Like, like Yeah, I can like, wake up drunk and, and yeah, tell my speech. Yeah, you, you can be able to do it in your sleep. I feel like that's where that, that comes yeah. from. But um, yeah, and I wasn't always the best speaker like. I wasn't even a good speaker. I wasn't even an okay speaker. I was a shitty speaker. I'm not yeah. talking about speaking to anybody. I'm just in general life, yeah. not a good speaker. And I'm actually still growing now. Um, but one thing that ha- helped me become a better speaker was just speaking every day to anybody yeah. and everybody. Yeah, 100%. Um, doesn't matter who it is. And especially, it's funny living in Philly because it's a little, you know, Philly is a little like, Closed off, and it's a little like everybody just kind of keeps to themselves. Yeah, uh-huh. So it can be a little weird. Be careful when you're speaking, because you know what I'm saying it can get weird. But yeah. I try to even when I'm um, opening the door for somebody, or even when I'm going past somebody, I might say, "Excuse me." Just every little opportunity, just to speak. I agree more, because that just gets you comfortable, you know, with anybody and everybody. Mm-hmm. I think if you keep having those interactions with other people, it'll give you more opportunities to expand on different ways to connect with people. Right. My right. biggest advice to anybody that wants to be a speaker is to understand anybody can relay information, Mm -hmm. but what inspires people is relatability. Right. And so figuring out where you connect with people, those are more gems you get to carry with you to Mm -hmm. use at different times. Right. More affinity stones, whatever you want to call it. So, okay, I got this story that connects. I got this joke that I know connects with these type of people. I have so many different ways. That's why I'm like very confident there's so many different rooms that I can win in as a right. speaker because I have different ways of connecting right. with people. Right. And so what? not only are you going to do that to find out those ways because you're, you're practicing, but you also got to go back to what we were talking about, that reflection. Right. You got to start thinking about what are the different stories and things I went through that are real. You know what I'm saying? Not just, hey, like I woke up and I worked hard and now I'm here. Like really, like give me some detail. Like what are some things that w- would get people to be like, yo, that's, that's a crazy story. I can relate to that. The more of those you think about, and everybody has those stories. Right. All a speaker is is a storyteller. Mm. And then you just relay the wisdom after it. You know what I'm saying? But if you just went up there and said a bunch of quotes, people would be like, bruh, I could have went to history class and it's, got it's, this. It's the connection. You know what I'm saying? The connection is, yo, dude, I'm for real, for real talking about this because not just because it sounds good, because this is who I am and what right. I went through. People people listen to that, not, um, you know, some dude reading a book. Right. Yeah, bro. So, let's talk about this. Okay. Somebody wants to be a somebody wants to be a public speaker. Yeah, they are great at speaking. They've always had. They were always naturally um, good at it. Mm-hmm. And um, they're let's say let's say they're in college, a freshman year in college. Okay. Uh, what do you think the first move should be? Wanting to go professional. They they they're good at public speaking. Mm-hmm. They got like a knack for it, but they always want to know what's the first thing they should be doing. I would say freshman year in college, yeah. get on as many stages as possible. Like just, just any opportunity to get on stage. Like open mics and shit. Like what you mean exactly? Anything, bro. Like, I, like for example, I got on that stage randomly just on a panel. Right. I yeah, shouldn't yeah, have been yeah. on that stage. Yeah. Um, or like, let's say you rep like in class. Like in mm-hmm. class, you have to present, and it's a group. Say I'll be the leader in, in presenting. Every right. single time there was any type of presentation or anything, I was always the one doing it because I felt as though this is where I have you the opportunity it. to grow. You need so. It, right? There's many opportunities, whether that's 
um, there's a family gathering and, you know, you want to do a quick toast or like all these are little things. Mm. Are you practicing it? You know what I'm saying? So basically grab every opportunity. Yeah, or it's just five of your friends chilling. Right. And you just like, yo, real quick, y'all, I just want to tell y'all I really appreciate All that mm. counts. You know mm. what I'm saying? I used to do all that stuff all the time. And sometimes, like, I would mess up. Like, I think I remember one time. Oh, I don't know why I'm having this vivid memory. But I kind of started speaking. Like, this is before I, like, this is when I quit my job to go speak. Mm. But I hadn't become a speaker speaker yet. And I'm at 4th of July with my friends. We're like, all this, like, 12 of us. Right. And I think one of my friends knew what I'm trying to do, or I'd already had my podcast, and we're going to do a toast. And I'm like, Jamar, do the toast, right, do the right. toast. Because you're speaking this Yeah, shit. I'm yeah. speaking, but kind of, and I'm like, all right, Ben, so I'm thinking of this elaborate thing. And I start speaking, and he was like, all right, bro, I didn't need that much. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dang. Right, Everybody right. was like, Could bro. You? Like, I was, I was going way too long. Mm-hmm. It was more like, hey, this is to more life, right, and right, friends right. connecting. <laughs> and right. Give yeah. a cook two sentences. I'm over here trying to give an address to the nation <laughs> or something. Shit. You know? bring out the quotes and but, shit. But you need those moments. Yeah, because it, it builds your like. Oh, I don't care. Right, you know what I'm right, saying. Right, so like right. in that moment, I was like, man, forget y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like now I have this energy about me. So sometimes it'd be like, oh, that didn't work, man. Whatever. Right. I, I liked it, right. and so people people can rock with me because they can tell, bro. Again, I'm just like authentic. Listen, that's a superpower, bro. Yeah. Listen, in this day and age, it's hard to for a motherfucker to be like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't about about people's validation about yeah. people in general. Um, I like to say that um, I gave most of that away, but I still sometimes, I don't consciously feel it, but subconsciously sometimes. Well, it'll never actually, go away. Right, right, yeah. right. Never 100%, because yeah. that's, that's we're human. human. Yeah. We're, that's literally how, how we were made. Mm-hmm. But I'm just, it's just funny, like, like how like subconsciously we're always relying on other people's uh, validation and stuff yeah. like that. And that's a really a superpower, bro. It is, because now you no longer are relying on anybody to keep you going. Right. So now people say success, I mean, the cheat code of success or the secret to success is consistency. Now consistency isn't dependent on somebody else. It's just who you are. Right. So like for me, speaking and being consistent in it isn't a matter of me working hard or somebody saying good job. It's just a matter of me waking up in the morning. Right. Because this is what I do. Right. And so mm-hmm. it isn't a matter of me like, ah, oh, da, da, da. No, nah, it's just right. who I am. Now, don't get me wrong. If a thousand people start saying I'm the worst speaker in the world, it would hurt. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the, another part of me was like, man, whatever. I have fun today, mm-hmm. so I still won. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when, you, when you're able to, to you're always going to care about people's opinions. Right. But when you're able to put yours number one is when is when you're actually being able to, to beat them. Yeah. I, I like to relate it to this. Um, speaking about fear. Fear is never going to go away. It's a natural human response. Yeah. But the people, the, one, the people that, that separates from us is that the people that are scared and they keep going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. That's really the thing. It's not that, oh, a motherfucker is so fearless, they can do whatever they want, they're so big and bad. It's not like that. You think that because your own opinions yeah. about yourself, but it, what it really is, they feel it and they keep going. They use that as motivation yeah. usually. Well, it's That's opportunity. It right. When I, when I go through something and I'm scared, I'm like, that's the direction I need to go in. Right. That's a, yeah. Like every chapter of my that's life, I, I chase the fear mm-hmm. because that's where the opportunity is. Because if... If you're not afraid of it, one, it's not challenging, and one, you don't, and two, you don't care about it. Right. So maybe it's challenging, but you just don't care, so you don't fear it because you never mm-hmm. even go over there. But if you care about something and it's challenging, that's exactly the, the potion be. of the opportunity to grow. So like right. for me, right now in my chapter, I was afraid of getting up early. Like that was literally getting a thing, what? getting up early. Oh, like that was right. like, I was like, I don't know. Like I'm not going to be able to hold myself to it. Why even try? Like, mm-hmm. I was giving myself all these reasons. And as the reasons kept coming up, it was more of a sign that that's what I needed to do. Right. How early do you wake up? Huh? How early do you wake 5:30 up? Five thirty now. That's yeah, tough. I'm trying to get to five and then four. I'm trying to admit that too, bro. Yeah, bro, it's it's it's, it's, it's game changing. Yeah, yeah. my I life heard. is. I'm getting so much done. I heard. Bro. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, I want to speak about um, a mouthpiece. Now, I okay. feel like a mouthpiece is so important, and you're the perfect person. To okay, talk about. in what way though? Because we can use a mouthpiece, and you know what I'm saying. You're right. Yeah. I just, I honestly mean just knowing how to communicate effectively. Yeah. And being able to talk to anybody at any time. Yeah. And even when you, even when you're tired, even when you're sad, it's like, um, your ability to walk in a room and bring and bring people yeah. and engage with you yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Even I've seen it on a smaller level, like even when it's like. You're, uh, you know, when you have a job or like a supervisor or people around you, like you, they like you, so like they let you do whatever you want to do. You feel me? And and it's really it's power too, bro. Like oh, I want to speak on that a little bit, like bro. It, it, pe- people will attract to you 
you can I don't want to say finesse, but like yes. you can work your <laughs> yes, way you into stuff. You know what I'm saying, bro? I be finessing, yeah. dog. Uh, you know he got his PR, huh? You got PR team. I know you, you, you see I'm working. <laughs> yeah. You see I'm like let yeah. me. But when I say finesse, though, it I, I'm never finessing for. Negativity. I'm never finessing. So like, let me get this this mic off of bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm finessing really to chase my dreams. You know what I'm saying? So I'm finessing by showing you, look, I am valuable, even though I don't have the prerequisite usual things that somebody has. Mm. But I'm showing you value in a different way. That's a finesse, but it's not really. I'm just showing you I'm valuable in a different way that you're used to looking at. Right. And so I'm just big on like, bro. Let me show you the value of things other than what you're usually looking at. Right. That's usually how the mouthpiece is. You can distract people from the obvious mm. and show them something that maybe is even more obvious. You know what I'm saying? So like you could, for example, in a job, right. you can pick bro. I know, I know, like you show up to interview. I know y'all interviewing other people. Mm. I know that. Or you spin game to somebody. I know you looking at other dudes. Right. But let me show you what I got that you can't put on a resume. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? What like that's what the mouthpiece does. It allows you to elaborate. It allows you to show creativity. More than anything, you're not even really showing them what you're actually saying. You're just showing the ability to even creatively show that you could think about stuff like Shit, that. Story. And so you're not even really story. impressed by what I'm actually saying. You're impressed that I would even try it. Right. And so some people just appreciate the effort. And they're like, if he would go that far. Right. And I bet he work hard because he know he low key mm. BSing me right now. Right. But the the fact right. that you even got yeah. the audacity to that. do that, yeah. you know what, bro? Yeah. I bet if you got a real opportunity, you would take advantage right. of it because there was no opportunity here, right. and you still looked at it. You know what I'm saying? So right. I I use the mouthpiece in different ways. Like it allows me to give people a different perspective because mm. they can feel it, and I'm able to use words that gets them to even see what I'm seeing that they can't even see in themselves. Right. And so if you're able to get people mm-hmm. to see a reality that they weren't able to once see, it changes now the perspective. Now it changes their actions. Right. And so, yeah, the mouthpiece in every realm, one of the best things you can ever have is a mouthpiece. Because yeah. it can it, it, take you anywhere. It can take you anywhere. Somebody like, you know what, bro? You can use the podcast studio. You know what, bro? You, you know, because right. people are like, you know what? I don't know what you just did, but I have a feeling just I from you saying me. that, that if you got me, you can get a whole bunch of people. So I want to invest in that right. stock. So. Right. And, you know, I didn't even know what that was at first, yeah. you know, like, I didn't even know, like, I was doing what I was doing. And um, I remember one time uh, I was going bowling. This is like, this is like maybe in high school. I was going bowling yeah. and um, I'm talking to the cashier person and um, I'm like saying, I mean, I don't remember what exactly what I was saying, but I was just basically sweet talking, trying to, trying to get yeah. something. Because it was like no lanes, but I'm like. Like, Bro, come on, come on, come on yeah. Lanes, whatever. Yeah, and um, she was fucking with me. That's when she was like, like, all right, all right, come back, come back in like fifteen minutes. I got you. And um, she hooked us up. Me and my friends, and my friends was like, yo, like, how you, like, how you was talking to her like that? You feel me? I'm like, like what? And um, and then I just started observing myself. I'm like, oh, this is what this is. And a lot of times we do it without realizing, but like these are skills like that you can really use. And once you understand certain stuff, once you understand people. I'm not going to say that. Once you understand yourself, yeah. you understand people, then you understand how everything works. And you understand that nobody, like, as when you're, when you're, okay, it, what, here's the key to it, bro. All right, let me, put me on, bro. Yeah, like, on. bro, the key to it is, like, when you're sitting there and maybe there's somebody over there, you're usually thinking, what if this, what if the thing about this? But then if you think, okay, what do you really be thinking about? You'd be really like, bro, I don't care. That person can come up right. to me. I'm not tripping. Right. When you start to realize nobody really care. And then if somebody does care that much to be like, yo, it'd be like, bro, get over right, anyway. Because right. now you uptight. You got you up. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so the thing is like, and I'm still, I'm still not the one that's always on that type of timing. Because mm-hmm. personally, I like to just stay to myself sometimes. Right. And personally, I can just feel right now is not a moment. But when it's really time, bro, I'm like, bro, come on. Let's go walk right. over to that sure person. Enough. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And you'd be surprised the amount of opportunities that are just waiting for you because those are opportunities most people don't take. So just gold mines but people are afraid of the gold mine saying not right now right you know what i'm saying and so you just have to put yourself in the flip shoes and be like if that was you would you really care right you know what i'm saying like like i've seen plenty of people you go to six flags and just be like yo bro like all right go ahead bro you lying bro bro i've that's seen a, bro that's crazy six flags, especially with yo. them like I, all right six pull flags up. don't sue me <laughs> yo don't pull up the six <laughs> flags that's what y'all gonna I say prob- okay yo pull up the six flags yo i'm just saying though you put you go to six flags it's the summer it's 100 degrees right you look at who like lined up doing mm. the tickets yeah and you'd be like bro right there right and you'd be like what's up bro we- yeah 
You you're right look, though, bro. I'm telling you, it's there. And what you just said earlier, you was like, yo, like people don't usually do this. So when somebody does do it, it's like, yeah. Fine. The fact you even go ahead, nigga. yeah, yeah. I fuck with that, bro. Um, oh, like, bro. I, okay, last time bro. this happened, bro. Funny story. This, this is. This, this is the first I remember I, I put it into effect I was at Six Flags With my boys And we had this thing Called like a uh, Like you get to skip the line Or whatever right. But it's not like The flash pass But it's like oh. Just one ticket But it was like From like 2021 Okay You know what I'm saying And you get it from the uh, Oh some old shit Oh some old shit Yeah but you get it from the Like the people If like something happens to ride They give it to you for free But they have new ones every year And they're like Dang we lo- mm. we, did, we didn't get it We didn't get the new one We, we found it like on the floor right, right, And I was, was like bro Give me that joint yeah. I said, watch this. I was like, we're going to go to the customer service. And I'm just like, be like, yo, they gave, we found, we got this. And they said it didn't work. And I don't even know what's going on. She's mm. like, oh, I got you. She gave me like six of them joints. And they were like, yo, why would you do that? I was like, bro, you just talk to people. Facts. And, and Facts. most of the stuff really isn't that valuable. Right. Right. It's not that big. It's because if you deep. give somebody a genuine connection, like mm. especially those people that are doing things that are mindless, they appreciate right. somebody Thank coming you. in and val- like mm. life hack. Tell uh, older people how they're doing. Just ask them. Right. They'll give you the world. Because not yeah. enough people respect and, and right. value them enough. You do that. You ask people, how are you doing today? Mm. You'll get in so many doors Yo, by yourself. Listen, the amount of conversations I had. This is why I said talk to everybody. Because the amount of conversations I've had that's been low-key thought-provoking and um, like thought-changing. Like When you just open your mouth sometimes, motherfucker look at you like, let me give you some game type shit. Yeah. Like, and it's weird how it happens because I'm just like, I might even, I might even just be a hi, how are you? But it will turn into something crazy, exactly. some existential, existential type, type shit. Yeah. And um, I really hold those experiences really true to my heart because those were the most or- organic and yeah. the most natural environments, bro. And it's, I can tell it's not fake. You feel me? Yeah. Where somebody, you might- They had no reason. Right, right. Rather than, I mean, like, um, no disvalue to you, but like, you know, we were, we, this was a planned interaction, right? Yeah. And um, I, I'm- Grabbing mad insight from it, right? Yeah. But it's nothing like feeling like when you're talking to somebody random, bump somebody yeah. on the elevator, and, you, and y'all have this crazy exchange just to never see each other again. Yeah. And it, it's something really poetic and beautiful about that. that I just love about life. I agree. You know what I mean? And um, I used to always say I didn't like people. Really? Yeah. Because um, I, w- I would grow up very shy, introverted, and um, I was very um, observing of everybody. I didn't like how a lot of people moved. Mm. Still don't. But <laughs> I always thought people were interesting. You know what I'm saying? And then once I was like, let me let go of this thought I have, like, that I don't like people. And let me actually give people a chance mm-hmm. to prove me wrong. You feel me? Yeah. That's why. That's how I live life. I do not have anything. I, don't, I try not to have any thoughts that are too biased. You feel me? Mm. Like, I, like, people that are racist, bro. Yeah. They're very, very miserable, first of all. Yeah. And, and, and they're very close-minded. 100%. And they can't go far with that. You feel me? But when you're open, when you're really... That was an extreme example, but if you're very open to a lot of things, things will light up. Like, for example, if you're a Democrat, right? Yeah. Whatever. Let's take, use politics. Yeah. If you're a Democrat, right? And you really strongly feel like on this side and you say F the other side, right? F yeah. Republicans. You have lost all type yeah. of intel or information you could possibly gain from that. Yep. Listen, like I don't, I, I will never be like f Democrats or f Republicans or any party because I like to learn. And yeah. first of all, if I'm on, a, if I'm on the side, I can learn about the enemy. First of all, yeah. you feel me? Because when you hate the other side, you'll say something You're clouded. That, right, right, right. You're clouded. It's just like hate. Hatred will cloud your mind. Yeah. It'll make you sound stupid. It'll make you think stupid. That's why you should never hate too. Speak on that a little bit. I like yeah, that you said that. Yeah, I think w- when you have so much hate, you. You lose sight of what there may be value in. You know what mm. I'm saying? You can find value even in something that's completely against what you believe in right. because it gives you more ammo to why that's stupid. Right. But if you're if you're so like confined to just like this is right, you, you miss out on the other side, which mm. is still beneficial because if you don't know your opponent, you can't know how to fight them. You're just right. screaming like, I know I'm better. We don't I need know to I'm fight. Right, right. But I think, here's my point with all this. I think all this stems from us being afraid to be ignorant without knowing that we're all ignorant. Right. Like, ignorant isn't such a bad word. Mm. I'm ignorant to your life. I don't know your upbringing completely from the day you were born to every experience. And I think we all want to say we're not ignorant. But I think the most wise person understands that they really don't know much. And so with my understanding, like, yeah, I, that's what I believe, but I'm willing to listen to other people because right. maybe they have more of a direct, you know, 
Right. You know, like, for example, like, one of the big things in politics is, like, certain things with women's rights. Right. And I have opinions, but at the same time, you know what? I will never actually have a good opinion. Right. Because at the end of the day, I'm not a woman. Right. So how could I possibly Speaking say, this is it? You know what I'm saying? And so there's just certain things. And there's certain things in my life where people are like, this is the way you should do it. But I'm like, yo, like. You have no idea. You don't know what I've been through. And so I think we have to, as a society, and I I, I see it all over TV, there's these strong opinions over things people have no actual experiences from. That's flaw. That is complete flaw. Because now I'm listening to somebody that has no idea what's actually going on. They just have an idea. Which is cool. I'm all for discussion. Mm -hmm. Let's debate. It's, it's, It's all positive. But let's be real here, though. Like We all don't really know nothing. Mm. We we fight a lot as human beings on things we all don't have real like facts on. Mm-hmm. Just it's all feelings or it's what our parents told us, so it has to be true. Right. But like, bro, like I don't know. Like we don't have enough people willing to say, I don't know. Right. And bro, when you do that, when you say I don't know, you're automatically smarter. Like, yeah. the real shit, like you're automatically smarter because listen, I ain't gonna lie. When I was younger, um, I I was a little I was a little ahead of the curve in school. Yeah. You feel me? Uh-huh. And so I I did used to fall into the victim of like um being a know it all. Yeah, a little, little bit of narcissism. Yeah, a little know? bit of narcissism. Yeah, right. But it's okay to be like that as a kid. You gotta you gotta figure it out before you yeah. become an adult though. Yeah. That's the thing you about get it. In the face. Real rap. Yeah. Because bro, once you understand you're not above anybody, bro. You automatically up. Yeah. You're up in every single type of way. And now you can connect with anybody. Yeah. Anybody. People above you, people below you. You mean like because that's such a that's such a good thing to do because you got you gotta really understand, bro. This is your life. This little shit. This is your life, bro. The world is infinite. Yeah. You understand that? There is no way for you to know everything. There's no way for you to even know a little bit. The only thing you know is just in your circle. And what you interact with, you yeah. feel me? And it's even then, it's like maybe you don't know. Really, all you know is yourself and your heart, right? So when you're open, you can talk to anybody. You can understand anything mm-hmm. if you're willing to listen. Exactly. A lot of people hear, but they don't listen because they're already disagreeing before you even open your mouth. Yeah. You feel me? So I think you need to. People need to start living their life more. Like I don't know. I, I don't agree, know bro. That's willing my philosophy. Listen, willing to listen. Yeah. It's a good job, bro. Um. Let's talk about. Um, so I want to get back on communication, bro, because okay. like that, that's really that's really your strong suit. Okay, you feel me? So, bro, what would you say? Top three things that you should be. Sorry, top three things that you should um, be doing. Do you hear that? Yeah, I hear that. Is that outside? Or is that right here? That's outside. Yeah, you know we in Philly. I know. I know. I'm like, I'm like, but they definitely can't hear that. Yeah, no, they can't. Yeah, yeah. I I hear in the head. I didn't hear in the headphones, but I heard outside. I was like, what the fuck is that? (laughs) My fault. Yeah. Uh, Let me start over for the clip. Nah, bro, just go ahead. Top three things a person should be doing if they want to be a public speaker. Top three things. Um, speaking as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So every opportunity, speaking. Um, two, I would say, looking at your contacts. And seeing who has the access to getting you on stage. Mm. You need reps. So networking, basically. Yeah, networking. Your, your network is truly your net worth because now we're talking about being an entrepreneur. Right. And you're not going to get any stage without somebody having access to an audience. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's all these people who are the, the middleman to an audience, whether that's right. a principal, a CEO, a marketing director, whatever. Maybe all those people are middlemen saying yes or no to you then speaking to their crew. Right. Do they want to partner with you or would you make it worse for them? And so... You got to be able to work that contact because you need proof to show to somebody else that's a cold. Like, they don't even know who you are to say, look, this does work. Mm-hmm. And so, um, even if it doesn't work yet, I need to practice getting better so right. that I can have the proof mm-hmm. that it does work. Or at least I got to look like I'm doing good enough right. so they can give me another try. And so, you got to at least show proof that, like, I'm a speaker and I've spoken before. Right. The hardest part of a speaker is getting booked on your first time because how are you going to get booked when nobody has seen you speak? Right. It's a dilemma. So you need to work the people you know, or you can go and, and find you a, a venue and you get you a, a videographer and they record you speaking in just a perspective. They can't see the crowds back right, there. Right. That, that's a way to do it too. Mm. And so those the most valuable thing as a speaker mm. you can ever have is a demo video. 
Yeah, that was hard. Yeah, and mm. so and so my demo video is my most prized possession other than family. Like, mm. like I, I go to battle for my family. Second, <laughs> my demo video. Yeah, yeah. Like somebody said, they took my demo video from all of the internet. We, we go on a war, dog. Like, mm. that's how valuable a demo video is because it's literally one thing you can put in front of somebody and it convinces them. If they don't rock with you after that, then you know what? They weren't meant for me or I need to work on my demo video right. again. Right. And so my demo video... <laughs> If, if you see my demo video and you're a prospective possible client of me, you're going to be sold or you're not going to be sold. And if you are sold, it's just a matter of, you know, we can make it happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't really have to worry no more because it's just like, okay, I just got to up my marketing and get more people to see mm. that video. But if you don't got the demo video right, then it, even you do all the marketing right, people will be like, eh. Right. So you got to get that demo video right. But you don't want to really work on that until you've put in some work. I was bold. My first gig, I tried to do my demo video, and that joint hit. People, oh, people go to my website, and they be like, yo, demo vi video fire. Or a principal, after my speech, was like, Jamal, I ain't gonna lie. We saw the demo video, sold. Damn. And I'm like, you want to hear a secret? I'm like, that was my first public speaking speech as like a professional. They're like, you're capping. I'm like, no, I'm facts. So those two things, just practice every day. And that, and what would I say is the third one, man, as a public speaker? Um... Networking, that, um, I'm trying to think, what else could you do? I mean, mentors, dog. Like, mentors. So one of the things that put me miles ahead of people is, again, like being willing to just humble myself. I'm right. never afraid. It, no matter how many people I've mentored, I'm never afraid to be the mentee. Right. Oh, bro, I just be asking questions. Right. Because at the end of the day, we can mentor each other. We don't got to be mentee, mentor. We can be mentor. So the best relationship mentor, mentee is when it's never really mentor, mentee. It's mentor, oh. mentor. Mm. And so anytime I'm getting game from people, I'm giving game back. Right. Have something of value that, like for example, I'm a very young speaker. Right. All the other speakers that are at my echelon in terms of like full time, mm -hmm. I don't have anybody else except for a couple. I know a couple mm -hmm. that are my age doing my thing. How old are you? I'm 24. Mm -hmm. I actually know a dude 20 killing the game. But, where is he, 19? Killing the game. He's the only one I really see as a counterpart and there's one other guy. Um, and so I see them as counterpart. But for the most part, when I connect with speakers, they're like 40. Right. So they have no understanding of the right. of the social media. Yeah. I be giving. I'm just like, bro. I'm about to drop yeah. so much game so on much you. Value. And so when they get that, they're like, well, let me just give Jamar everything. Because what you'll see with a mentor is they'll give you game. Like you come up to me and ask me, you know, I'm still never going to give everything out because I ain't got the time. Mm. And if you don't show me you're valuable enough or serious enough to actually do something with it, I'm not going to waste my time explaining a two hour master class on every right. step. Right. And so when you then show your value. Yeah. Somebody's gonna want to be able to just say, "Man, let me just give you the whole game." Right, that's for everything, though. That's you know with everything. That's yeah. why I was like, "Bro, let me get that." So those three things, yes. Yeah, so um, you're going to speak like just literally set this phone up. You don't need uh -huh. no camera, and do this and listen to yourself. Mm. Th that's a huge one. Mm. Listen to yourself. Don't just speak. Listen, and it allows you to see where you're messing up, where you're doing wrong, and right. then we start getting on pie. I would get on many podcasts as possible. One, because it allows you to see other ways of you articulating what you're saying. Right. I have a ton of quotes that are like people are like, ooh. And it's just from me listening to podcasts, different speeches, where I enter flow state and I just randomly say right. something. Now I'm like, oh, I got to take that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And so I think you got you to gotta get in different places so you, you, you get yourself in a different mode. Or even if you're just talking to people. Be cognizant of the things you say because you might be like, oh, that's a word I can use. That's a right, quote. Right. And so after that, listen to yourself. What I do every morning at 530, the first thing I do is listen to myself. Explain. So the first thing I do, this is this is my process. Mm. First thing in the morning after I wake up, meditate, strain up the crib a little bit, get mm. my work area. First thing I do, I have a whole database of all my podcasts I've been in on, all my speeches, all my lives, all my random Wisdom, I have a database. It's like on your computer? Yeah, it's on a Google Drive database. Google Drive. And it's all sectioned off with a different type of content. This is also me creating my content. Right. But I'm listening and I have a, a notion on the other side doing the clip. And I'm listening to every second of me speaking. So when we're done with this and you upload this joint, right. I promise you at 5.30 in the morning, weeks from now, months from now, mm -hmm. I'm going to be sitting watching this joint. Right. And I'm like, ooh, at this moment I could have explained this better. And this moment is a good clip. But this is also where I could bring this in. When right. I'm at a gig or whenever. And so I'm just learning more and more. Like, I listen to myself so much that it no longer affects me. Like, you know, mm. like anybody who's who spoke on a camera or a mic and you listen to yourself for the first time, you sound horrible. Right. Just know I've listened to my speak so much that it doesn't bother me anymore. Right. 
Right. That's, I'm still in that stage. That's yeah. shit, that shit. I'd be like, oh my. I know this, you did. I'm like this nigga. I listen to myself. Like, I know, bro. In time, bro. I'm bro, like, I personally can't listen to my first season of my podcast. Right. Because that sounds disgusting. Right. But that's also because, yo, I've articulated so much better. Right. Like, I can hear. I can hear that I wasn't confident what I was mm. saying. So now, I listen. I'm like, I be watching my joints, bro. Like, damn. And I be, no, bro, I be. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying like, like bro was spitting dog bro, Like bro. you know And so But that's how good I've gotten And now I can take All those bits and pieces mm. So a lot of speakers Speak a lot But they don't listen To them speak mm. You gotta listen Cause your listening Is what's gonna tell you Where you can get better like, Ooh bro. Let me add in some pauses what's All your, that stuff What's your process with that though So like you're listening You're listening to the pod You're listening to what, how you speak Yeah But how do you actually transition And apply that to like You know yourself Like oh Like is this a mental thing Are you writing down Like like how, Applying like, to what Like my speeches and stuff Yeah like, yeah Just like your growth and everything Like like or is it kind of Just like a mental thing Yeah I, I think it's more of a uh, Some conscious thing So Alright So as a speaker You get better Subconsciously like it's it's all like okay, let me not say that. For me as a speaker, right. I think other speakers they think differently. This is how my mind works. Right. But subconsciously, my mind is gaining vocabulary every time I listen to myself speak, or even I listen to you speak. Right. And there may have been something you said today. I'm like, oh, I like the way you put that. Right. And now that is in my head, and I don't even know this in my head. And then I'm gonna be on a stage next week. Right. It's just gonna come out randomly. So I'm just constantly working on my subconscious. Mm. How did a baby learn how to speak English? He just listened and it just came out. He didn't say, oh, dad yeah. said Put his drink up. water. Right, right, no. Right. The, the, the kid is listening and just subconsciously then comes out. Mm. That is still happening to this day. It's a lot harder because our minds aren't as right. sponges. But when you listen to yourself every day, dog, like subconsciously, I'm getting so many more um like the word cognitive, like that did not used to be in my vocabulary. I just listen to things. Right. Now it just comes out. It comes out naturally. And I don't even think I could tell you the definition of that word. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I feel you. It's just, that. you know, constantly listening to me is, is just subconscious. And then yeah. I also, like, I'm writing the clips down. And so I'm listening even more. And then I'm like, really, like, it's confirmed in my mind type thing. Good job, bro. That, yeah. That was insight for me, too. Yeah. I fuck with that, bro. No um, problem. Do you have anything to tell me? About the bad sides of this business. So for anyone that's really getting into it, mm. what's something that they should be looking out for? Anything that you feel like you've fell short upon getting into the game or anything like that? Do you have anything like that? Sure. One I'll say about this game is people will try to invalidate your ability or what you're talking about. People like... Explain that. Yeah, people will say like, did you get a degree in like mental health or in, in mm. psychology? They're invalidating my own experiences. Right, I see what you're saying. I just had a, a YouTube hater. Like, he comments on everything, and he'll be saying that. What the fuck? Bro, I'm like, dude, what What are you doing with your time? Yeah. He'd be doing that. He'd be like, bro, all your videos are BS. Like, bro, you don't, they're not actually real. You're feeding people lies. I'm like, bro, literally live this. Insecurities, though. Bro, that's him dealing with something else he yeah. dealt with, you know? Yeah. That's real. That don't really affect me no more, because I know, like, I just had 15 kids line up to right. me after I spoke, right. like, do with no logo on his YouTube thing. I'm not <laughs> yeah. worried about you. Right. And then it's also, um, you, you got to deal with a lot of people not seeing your value in general. Like, a lot of people will tell you no a lot. Mm. And it's discouraging. Because it's like, yo, I just need an opportunity. Especially right. in the beginning of speaking business. And you're working so hard. Yeah, and I think this isn't even speaking advice. This is entrepreneur. This, this is life advice. People will tell you no over and over again, even when you know your intuition is what you're meant to do. Mm. But you have to remember that this is preparing you for all the things you have in your future. Right. You need the no's to know how much you really love it. If you got the yes immediately, you wouldn't know how bad you really love this. Right. Even though you really do, but you wouldn't mm. really know, so you wouldn't push yourself. So sometimes you have to be pushed to the wall so you know, like, yo, I, I'd really go that far. Even though you never going to have to be pushed to the wall again, right. but just know, like, yo, I'm here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's a different level of, like, yo, I ain't backing down. For sure. You know? And so... I think you got to deal with no a lot and um, be cool with it. I almost be happy with it. You know, I, I wasn't even meant to be with y'all then. The next one. Exactly. Yeah. And so that builds another level of storytelling. But Shit, confidence too. Confidence. But, self -worth but as, as a speaker, bro, an entrepreneur, I'm constantly selling myself and people telling me no. But what's crazy is for all those no's, there's somebody coming to you already have said yes before you asked them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But if you wouldn't have stayed in the game... You would never found them. You know what I'm saying? Right. So all those no's is leading you to somebody that's perfect. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you really don't need that many yeses. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. People think you need all these yeses. You only need a couple yeses, bro. Why are you saying that? Bro, like, I don't need to speak every day or anything. Oh, like, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, you, you don't need that many yeses. And with each yes, you get more yeses. Right. But in the beginning, the no's is a lot because nobody said yes before. So why would I give you a chance? Right. That's where the mouthpiece come in, being able to like show people realities mm-hmm. that isn't a reality yet. But, bro, people are going to say no. But like you, I don't need that many yeses. Right. And the moment you not stop needing yeses is the moment you get the most yeses because right. they can feel. Okay, so here's the game. And as an entrepreneur, as anybody selling anything, people can feel somebody that's desperate. Okay, right. And so when I'm actually desperate, people can feel that. But then when I'm not desperate, when I don't need it anymore, when I'm desperate, that's when I need it the most is when I get it the less. Mm. But the moment I don't need it is when I get it the most. Mm. You see how that works? Like, right. I didn't need it, but now I'm getting it. Because right. people can feel, oh, dude must got emotion because he right. don't care if I say yes or not. Right. Like, it's, oh, we need to book a meeting. Yeah, I'm on the road all next week. So if you want to make it happen, we have to do Monday. Right. Okay, we got to figure this out. Mm. So now I get people talking to me on the phone like, okay, Jamal, we got to figure this out. And I apologize. Now I was the one apologizing. Right. I was the one saying whatever time works for you. Now they're saying whatever time works right. for me. The balls in your flipped, feet. yeah. And so, even when you are desperate, never show, show your cards, right? Because that's when people are then confirmed of their preconceived notion that you don't have any value, right? And really, you do. It's just you're so desperate because you know you have it. Yeah. But I understand you're excited. Yeah, yeah. calm yeah. down. And, and it, what we're saying is, this is all a game. Yeah, it, it, it's sad. It's like that, but it's like that's just life. You life, know what I'm saying? Bro. So, and if you don't want to play it, then. It's going to happen. The game is still going to be going. Oh, you the just, game's you, still be played. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to get played regardless. Yeah. So you might as well take what, take what Jamar is saying and apply it to your life. You feel me? And, and still stay true to you. For sure. You know, still for stay sure. true to you. But for sure. You reality. don't get lost in that. Yeah. I was having a conversation with a friend, right? Mm-hmm. And um, uh, she was uh, having trouble. Um, I don't know. She was having boy issues. Yeah. I, I could take everything in my life and just like, make it make it grand. You feel me? Um, uh-huh. so she was having boy issues or whatever the case is. And, um, she felt like she was, uh, she was having self-worth issues. And um, I was just thinking like, yo, like the people that get everything they want, how are they acting? Mm. The people that, the people that are rich and well off, mm. do they feel like they need it? Like, mm-hmm. how are they acting with their money? Do they feel like they're just, um, they're holding on to it, clutching it all the time? So it, it's really funny. Like, wait, like, could you, I brought, I brought this up because you were saying, um, when you needed the most, it wasn't there. Mm-hmm. But you wanted the least, it was flooding in. Mm-hmm. So I like to sometimes adapt certain traits that um, I see successful people have. Mm-hmm. And the traits that I'm talking about is, bro, they don't care whether they get it or not because they know it's coming. Mm-hmm. So they're not like, give me, give me, give me. They're just like, yeah, it's, it's coming, it's cool. It's but right. you know what that comes from? Elaborate. Them chasing a dream through their process, not somebody mm-hmm. else's process. Right. And so understanding right. people were like, yo, you should do it this way. You should do it this way. But on the road to a real big goal, it takes long-term consistency. Mm. So when we're talking long-term consistency, it isn't about the best method per se. It's about what's going to allow you to be fulfilled in the journey. Mm. And so when you enjoy the walk, the destination eventually mm. comes. Right. But when you're sprinting and hate it, Right. It doesn't matter how fast you're going. You're never going to get there. So I'm still winning the race because you, okay, on the road to success, this is something I've realized, okay? When we start comparing ourselves to people, it's pointless. You know why? Well, All of them are going to quit. Mm. They are, I promise you. So just walk, bro. Right. I used to have a podcast. I'm like, this person has a similar podcast. And right. Bro, they all quit. Mm. They are all going to quit. The one percenters aren't those that did anything crazy. It's just the person that never quit. Yo, that's all yeah, it is that's and right. so you stay creative right. stay doing things differently but dog keep trying the priority is just what type of system and process am i setting not to get there as quick as possible but what process am i saying setting that will allow me to last forever mm-hmm. i look at everything as a marathon can yeah. i keep this pace until i die right and so when you're when you have that mindset it is okay let me walk how can i take a step every day now how can i take 10 Right. Because the person that takes 10 is exhausted at the end of the day and eventually like, bro, it's not even worth it. Mm-hmm. And while they ran five laps, the race is, is like a thousand laps and you're just walking mm-hmm. peacefully. And what's crazy is you smelling the roses, mm-hmm. you learning, and with each step, 
you end up taking this big stride. Right. And now your walking is faster than they're running. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's something really I got over is comparing yourself. Yep. I also wanted to say, too, you have to enjoy the um, the walk. Like what you yes, were saying. 100%. You have to really live in it, honestly. And when you do that, when you start to live in it, it becomes like you're not expecting anything. Like we were saying mm-hmm. earlier, like you're not expecting anything. You're doing it just for the love of the game. Yeah. I'm doing this right here. It's really for the love of the game. I love talking to people. Yeah. And I wanted to show everybody else. Yeah. Like I could have had a phone call with you, bro. I could I could have I could have met you somewhere. You yeah. feel me? And we probably will do that when next time you're in Philly and shit like that. Yeah. But I wanted to share it with people. Yeah. That that's that's the difference between I feel like when you were saying how everybody quit because a lot of people are doing it, not because they want to. They and see it the is. benefits. You feel me? They there see it is. They, they see all of what everybody else is doing, they seeing the benefits of everything. And um uh, and that's why that's the difference between me and a lot of other people that I do it just because I love the game. Mm-hmm. And when you do it because you want to, bro, nothing's going to stop you, bro. I have never, not one time have I seen somebody try their hardest, stayed consistent, and did it because they loved it and failed. Never. I have never You know what I like to say, though? What's crazy is what is failure and what is success. Right. Because what I would say is the moment you start doing something you love to do and you stick to it, regardless of the results, you already are successful. Right now in this moment. As long as we define it as that, we are successful. Right. Successful is only a definition you decided to be. Right. It has nothing to do with the the heights you get to. It's a decision. It's a, what you believe in is most valuable. Mm-hmm. And so when you de- when you determine yourself as already successful, then everything else is just icing on the cake. Right. So me waking up every day, clipping my videos, and me like getting the video, and I'm just having so much fun. I already won, and people like people that have won. Shit, and bro. so they can feel that Jamar already knows he don't need me because he already won. Mm. Therefore, I'm the winner in their eyes too. Right. But the person that needs to be in the winner of eyes of people is never the winner because they can feel that I need them to see that. Oh, shit. Bro, I'm chilling back right here, like me or not. And those are the people that mm. like you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro, like, I know you, you probably relate to this too, bro. I love the game so much. I love the fucking hustle so much, bro. I'll get up. I think bro, about he, this. He, bro, he, <laughs> bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Rami, what I'm talking about, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, no, bro, bro, rap. No, <laughs> real rap. I, mean, <laughs> I love the hustle, yeah. man. I love the game. Would well, the game still though. love me, though? Real rap. You know what I'm saying? Well, listen, I'm rap, though. Like, I love it so much, bro. I think about it when I wake up. I wake, think about when I go to sleep. Yeah. I'm obsessed with this, low yeah. key. You feel me? And um, when I feel that way about it, I don't care. I don't care about anything external, bro. Like, we're at, like even if my, my video doesn't do as good as I feel like I, it should have, I'm yeah. like, maybe they'll come back to it. Maybe they won't. You feel me? I'm, I'm just so detached from it now. It's just like I'm posting everything. I'm posting everybody, everything, everything yeah. I got. And um, I, I, I was doing this for a long time. It's content creation stuff, not just podcasts, but I've been doing content creating yeah. since I was like 15 or 14, Word. something like that. Okay. So me posting now and me doing all this don't bother me. You feel me? Because I'm at a point you, where you've I, been past that yeah, threshold. Yeah, yeah. So, but like, that's why I try to tell people like sometimes people are in my DMs saying like, oh, like they're scared to start. And if that's you, bro, if you want to, if you want something, bro, you have to go get it. There's no one that's going to wake you up in the morning and make you chase your dreams. You feel me? You have to get up every day. Like, I want to do this. And a lot of motivation I had was just stuff I didn't want to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to wake up the rest of my life and go to a job that someone has to tell me what to do every single day. You feel me? So I use this as motivation, bro. I use it as like, yo, like I want to go somewhere. And not even just about the money. It's just about the lifestyle. And like, I want to connect to people. I want to wake up and be like, yo, let's go to work so I can talk to somebody and gain knowledge. Like, like I want to just win just based on me getting knowledge, bro. 100%. And whatever that is for you, bro, you need to go chase that, bro. Start whatever you're trying to start, bro. And I want you to speak on that too, like that whole... Yeah, bro, here's here's what I would say to those people that are afraid to start. Which one are you afraid of more? And I'm going to argue this. Are you afraid of failing or are you afraid of regretting for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. One of the things I always do yeah. in decision making is imagine yeah. I'm sitting on my big daddy chair. My grandkids are all right there and they yeah. ask me what I did at that like pivotal moment. Did I settle or did I go for my dreams? And regardless of the result, I want to tell them I went for it. Right. What would you want to tell them? Would you want to tell them you were afraid to start it because of some person you're not even meant for his opinion? So I always look at it as, look, failure sucks, right? 
I promise you in a year, you're going to almost forget about it. But regret, you will forever have these two words. What if? Right. What if is something you can never get the answer to? I don't live my life ever having to say what if, because if I ask myself what if with a situation, then I'm going to find out that answer. That's how I live my life. And so I fail, but guess what? I learned from that failure. I could do something, but a regret, a what if question after the fact, you can't do jack with it. You just sit there and sulk. So we all have our things out there that we have our what ifs, but let that then be the what if to give you the reason to never have to do that again. Right. You know what I'm saying? That what if was a reason, so I know never right. have to what if again. And so what I would tell that person is I understand those fears, but are any of those fears more deadly than regret? And if you really think about it, hell no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not sure. even close. For and sure. so I always tell myself, bro, like, you're not meant for everybody. Somebody's always going to hate. Right. All the things you're afraid of, what's crazy is on both sides are there. Right. All the things you fear, it's on the side of going for it and don't going for it. But at least you get to find out the things that wouldn't have even come if you do go for it. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. So it's it's pointless not going for it, bro. Right, because right. if it if it's in your heart, then even if you don't get there, think about who you become in the process. Right. Sometimes there are dreams that are put into your heart, not even for you to make them a reality, but just so you go in the process of overcoming whatever you have to overcome through that process mm -hmm. so you can become something for a greater purpose we can't even imagine. Right. And when you trust that, you, it's game over. You know how many dreams I've had that, that didn't make it, but I was able to at least find out, oh, I'm not meant to do this. Right. But then right. I go to my next step, and it's like, oh, look at the skills I'm using mm -hmm. from that. So life just put this in my heart, not for me to actually get it. So I don't even like to say, yo, I used to say, watch, I'm going to do this. I don't even like to say that anymore. I'm going to go for this, and we're going to see what happens. Right. Maybe one day my passion no longer is to speak, but all those lessons... On translate. It's translating to whatever I'm meant to do. So don't even. So I, I, I'm a big on detach from the result. Detach completely. Detach. Don't even right. care. Right. Just focus on the process. Let the 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 possible result fuel you, but don't be attached because maybe that is preparing you for something even better than you can imagine. Right, bro. I, I say this, yo. A mistake is for a second. Regret is forever. Mm, bro. There you go. You See? can you can always um, fix a mistake. You can you can always um, you know do something to like. Uh, fix it, but like regret, bro. You can't go. I back know. In I'm time. taking that. You can't take that time. <laughs> you can't go back in yeah. time, gang. Like yeah. it's over. So like, make your mistakes now, bro. It's gonna happen regardless. Make your mistakes now because once you 60, you know you out of your prime. You just you know you got kids already. You settling down. You don't want to be like, damn, I could have been doing this. Yeah. Hundred percent, dog. I live my life with the quote of "I'd rather try something and fail than to never try and never know." That's mm. my quote. That, that that's engraved. But mm. um, every time decision, I say that quote: "Rather try something and fail than to never try and never know." Right. And whatever the answer is to that that little quote is usually the right thing you need to do. Right. Uh, that's, that's a good like little policy you got yeah. for yourself. That's, that's a good John. Yeah, yeah. Because bro, like, I'm a type of person. I like to know everything. Yeah. Like, I go to the good, the bad, and everything. Yeah. So, like, if I want something and I, I'm thinking about something, I'm going to try it, bro. Yeah. Like, I always it. like to uh, compare to, like, when you're at the mall and you see a beautiful woman. Like, mm. you know that feeling going back home, like, dang, could that have been? Right. Like, think of that on a grander scale. Right. That's your dreams, dog. Right. Except you really got to feel that. Right. Because you're going to see them dreams more. I'm going to forget what that girl looked like mm. in a week. But... That joint, bro, you don't want to feel that feeling on a magnified feeling. You lay in the bed like, damn, that girl was so pretty. You no, know what I'm thanks, saying? Thanks, bro. Go That's get that dream. girl, man. You know what I'm saying? Get that girl, bro. Listen, you know I fuck with you, bro. Is there any last remarks you got to say to, 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 the, to the audience? Anything you want to leave them with? Uh, let me see, man. What, what's, been, what's been on my heart? I mean, what's been on my heart is, okay. There's something very small that's going to make a big difference in your life. Like, there's something you're avoiding. There's something you keep saying, no, nah, I don't need that. No, nah, I can keep doing this little thing. Oh, I know it doesn't feel right, but you know what? I, I got to keep it going for the squad or for the, you know, whatever. Right. Bro, lock in and do that thing that seems so little. It can be a game changer. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's a game changer. Understand what your priorities are. Is your priority short-term fun or long-term freedom? Right. And that's not me saying not to have fun. Have fun. Make memories. But lock in what you know is what you're meant to do, or at least what you're meant to do in this moment. And find your reason for whatever you're put on earth to do, or even in just this moment. And so whatever that little thing is, for me, bro, it was just like, yo, lock in 
get up earlier and stay off your phone. Right. It was that simple because right. I had I had enough ideas. I had enough like things I was doing and processes and people that taught me things. Mm. There is a point where no longer do you need to listen to this podcast. Right. Here's a moment where you just got to do what you say you know you need to do. Right. No longer like I think a lot of people, a lot of creatives, they they're so good at the one thing a lot of people can't do, which is think creatively. Mm. But then they forget the one thing that everybody can do and it's just do the work. Right. And so buckle down and just do the work. One of the things I explained, I had an epiphany about the other day was as creatives, we have done the hardest part. We have done the hardest part and we have thought of something that isn't a reality yet and we've made a reality. And then we're sulking about other people not seeing it yet. Mm. Like we haven't had the whole world jump behind it yet. Right. But all you have to do is get up out there and get in the trunk and show them. Right. But we're worried, man, is maybe it's not going to work out. But you've already done the hard part. You done it. You've made the impossible possible. But now you're worried about marketing or now you're worried about simple things. Bro, just post the dang video. Like you made the video. You had the courage to set up the camera. But you're afraid of, oh, did I get like the title right? And how consistent do I have? Like, bro, right. we overthink the stuff that anybody can do. Right. And we forget we've already done the thing that seems so impossible to most. Right. And so whatever that little thing is for you, for me, it was literally stay off your phone and get up earlier. And once I did those two things, I've been just like locked in. Water. And it's like, because everything else was already done. Right. Like I had the ideas I had. I've worked on my speaking for five years mm. and I've done all these things and I was and I'll rationalize. Oh, maybe it's this. Maybe it's like, no, it's none of that stuff. Right. It's the one thing in your face. Get up earlier, bro, and lock in. And so I, I, yeah. I know you got reasons for whatever, mm. but you know the reason. Come on now. Gonna leave it straight like that. Yeah. We're gonna leave it straight like yeah, that, bro. bro. Let, let them know where to find you and everything, bro. Yeah, um, I think you can find so if I had one big call to action, follow me on YouTube. That is where all my game is going. Yeah, I peep, you've been going crazy recently. Bro, I peep that, bro. I, bro, every single day on YouTube, you will see a video at 3 30 Eastern Standard Time. I give all my game on there. Mm -hmm. Every time I have any bit of wisdom, it's going on there. This podcast, I'm gonna drop some clips from this that are on a specific sure. topic. Everything that you ever have got, like anything in my head, I'm dropping it. I have a responsibility. It's there. It's raw, uncut. It's literally, you know, I'm in the car like, whoa, bam. Like, nice. get me on YouTube. The clips will be on my Instagram. All of that is Root of Jamar. R-O-O-T-O-F-J-A-M-A-R. -O 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 um, you can also search Jamar Root on YouTube. All that will pop up. Um, my podcast is Root of Everything. Some stuff will be dropping soon on that joint where I interview people that have found what they love to do and found success within it. So if you look, it. yeah, if you... If you look up Root of Jamar, you're going to see everything, every social media platform for the most part. I don't get on that X stuff, but you're going to see me everywhere. You feel me? Thanks, bro. Yeah. Nah, big things, big things happening for you, bro. And I, I just want to say good luck on everything. Bro. Like, well, hey, bro, I, I love the platform you've built here. Um, and just keep doing you, bro. Like, just keep, keep being authentic, bro. Appreciate I can already feel that vibe. And um, I appreciate you seeing the value in me to have me on here. For sure. Me? Oh, bro. Thank yeah. you. So, y'all hear us, man. I want y'all to have a good day, bro. And y'all be safe. It's been saying for sure.